In this video, we will see how to prepare adjusting entries. To record revenues in the period in which they are earned, and to recognize expenses in the period in which they are incurred, companies prepare adjusting entries at the end of each accounting period. Adjusting entries convert a company's accounting records to the accrual basis of accounting. Their main purpose is to match incomes and expenses to appropriate accounting periods. Every adjusting entry will involve one income statement account and one balance sheet account. An adjusting entry is needed in cases of deferrals and accruals. Deferrals are further classified into prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. Prepaid expenses are expenses paid in cash and recorded as assets before they are used or consumed. Unearned revenues are revenues received in cash and recorded as liabilities before services are performed. Accruals are further classified into accrued revenues and accrued expenses. Accrued revenues are revenues for services performed but not yet received in cash or recorded. Accrued expenses are expenses incurred but not yet paid in cash or recorded. Let's look at an illustration to see how to prepare adjusting entries. Patrick Curick, DDS, started his dental practice on January 1st, year 1. Transactions occurred during the first month of operation are provided. We will prepare adjusting entries using the provided accounting titles. On January 31st, Patrick performed services worth of $1,000 for patients with dental insurance for which payment was neither received nor recorded. This can be identified as accrued revenue. This can be recorded by debiting accounts receivable for $1,000 and crediting service revenue for the same amount. In the second transaction, utilities expenses of $1,500 were incurred, but no payment was made until the end of January. It is an accrued expense. To record this transaction, utilities expenses is debited for $1,500, and utilities payable is credited for the same amount. In the third transaction, Patrick purchased dental equipment for $70,000, paying $15,000 partly in cash, and $55,000 by signing a note. The equipment depreciates $450 per month. Interest is $550 per month. In this case, the adjusting entry is required to record depreciation on equipment and the interest expense accrued at the end of the period. Depreciation is the cost that the company allocates to expense the cost of the equipment for the period. Hence, this can be identified as a prepaid expense. To record depreciation, we debit depreciation expense, an expense account, for $450 and credit accumulated depreciation, equipment, a contra asset account, for the same amount. To record the accrued interest expense, we debit interest expense for $550 and credit interest payable for the same amount. Next, on January 1st, Patrick purchased a one-year malpractice insurance policy for $12,000. This is a prepaid expense. Expenses paid in advance are considered as an asset at the time of payment, and as the amount expires, the asset is reduced and an expense is recorded for the amount of the reduction. In this case, $12,000 is the cost of insurance for 12 months, which is paid in advance. At the end of January, prepaid insurance expenses that pertains to the month of January need to be expensed. To record the insurance expense for the month of January, we debit insurance expense for $1,000, calculated by dividing $12,000 by 12 months, and credit prepaid insurance, an asset account, for the same amount. In the last transaction, dental supplies were purchased for $2,000, and the supplies on hand at the end of the month were $500. This is an example of prepaid expenses. The difference between the unadjusted balances in the supplies account and the actual cost of supplies on hand represents the supplies used for the period. The use of supplies decreases asset and increases expense. To record the supplies expense for January, supplies expense is debited for the difference amount of $1,500 and supplies is credited for the same amount. 